priming system of the Pioneer pump consists of a suction spool, a priming chamber, and a vacuum pump. In this segment, we're going to focus on the priming chamber and the suction spool. Let's start with removing the hose clamp so that allows us to remove the hose that comes from the vacuum pump to the priming chamber lid. We also have a ball valve here. This, the functionality of this ball valve is if you were to have a flooded suction situation, pumping situation, you would want this ball valve closed so that no, no, under no circumstances could pressurized fluid come through the posi valve to the, to the vacuum pump. So this is a protection valve for that purpose. Next, you want to take a pipe wrench. You want to unloosen this 90 degree elbow so that we can get to the posi valve. You have to access the posi valve from the top of the priming chamber lid. The next step to removing the priming chamber lid, you must first remove the nuts off all the bolts that hold the lid to the priming chamber. We have already removed the nuts to, to make this speed this process up. In order to lift this priming chamber lid off of the priming chamber, it may be easier if you screw the 90 degree elbow and ball valve back on the pipe nipple a few turns so that it allows you to have a handle to lift the lid off of the priming chamber. As you can see, you have a float ball and linkage coming off the lid. You want to be careful when you pull this off so that you don't damage the ball or the linkage when removing it from the priming chamber. Take any look inside the priming chamber after you remove the lid, you will see a baffle. This baffle should be spot welded to the side of the chamber. If you look a little further, you can see the suction screen. That screen is in between the suction spool and the priming chamber. You want to make sure that there's no debris plugging that screen. Now that we have the priming chamber lid removed, it may be easier if you have access to a vise. You can clamp the lid in a vise. What I want to show you uh, here, why it's in the vise, I want to show you the float ball and the linkage and the posi valve. Okay? Notice that all the, the float ball, all the linkage, and all the posi valve components are all made out of stainless steel. And how this works is when, before the pump primes, the weight of the ball uh, through the linkage opens the valve. It holds it open until the pump starts to prime, the fluid comes in, touches the ball, the ball rises, and there's a spring inside here that closes the posi valve. There's a spring, a shaft, and an O-ring, and the O-ring seals on a seat. So one of the things you want to look for when you open this up, you want to be able to grab this ball and, and make sure that your linkage is moving freely. The other thing you might notice is the linkage is fairly sloppy um, because, and that's done for a reason, because there's a lot of things moving in here and uh, it would be easy to, things would get hung up if things were really tight. So don't be alarmed if pins feel a little loose, that, that's, that's normal. So next, we're going to remove the linkage and we're going to pull the posi valve out so you can see the different components inside the posi valve. Now it's time to remove the posi valve from the priming chamber lid. In order to do that, we must remove the top nut from the posi valve to pull the valve out the bottom side. Sometimes, on occasion, the nut on the bottom side will spin and not allowing you to loosen the nut on the top side. 
you may need to use a small pair of vice grips on the posi valve shaft to hold it in place to allow the nut to be loosened. Once the nut is loosened, remove the nut, the, the, the posi valve comes out and for inspection on the table. Okay, now that we have the posi valve out of the priming chamber lid, let's go over some of the components so that you can see what's in there and, and understand their functionality. We remove the nylock nut. We have a spring retainer on the top side. We have a re, uh, return spring. We have three flat washers that are used to adjust the spring tension. We have an O-ring for the seat. We have the shaft. We have another flat washer that it, the float actually, the float actually, uh, uh, that's what controls the float and the valve. That's the contact point to open and close, to open the valve, the spring closes the valve. So, one of the key, thing, the key things in here are these flat washers. These flat washers are to set the spring tension on the return side of this valve. So as I had spoke earlier, this valve opens with the float, closes with the spring. When you disassemble this, you may see two flat washers, you may see flat three flat washers. The reason for that is when we assemble these valves at the factory, these valves are all tested. Some of them require two, two washers, some require three. If you have too much spring tension, the float, the weight of the float will not open this valve to allow the pump to prime. If you have too little a spring tension, the valve will not seat and it will allow fluid to go past the posi valve and into your, into your vacuum pump. One of the other key uh, things for a field, if you're out in the field and this O-ring has failed and it has not been used before on both sides, you can actually remove this O-ring, flip the O-ring over and put it back on and you have a whole new sealing surface to seat against the, the seat. So when we're going back together, we want to make sure that the O-ring is seated in the O-ring groove. It goes just like that. We want to make sure that we have the proper amount of shims, whatever came out, put them back on the threads. We install our spring, then we install the spring top spring retainer, and we install our lock nut. Here we can see the beveled surface that the O-ring seats against to close the posi valve. So you got your shaft, you got your O-ring, goes inside, seats against the beveled surface. So in order to put this back together, one of the things you need to look at, you need to look at your O-ring face for Nick's cuts, you need to look at the beveled surface for any damage needs to be clean of any debris on the assembly reassembly process. Next we're going to discuss the priming chamber the suction screen and the suction spool. In order to remove the priming chamber, four bolts must be removed from these positions to allow us to remove this priming chamber. One of the things I want to show you here, in this priming chamber is uh, sealed with two O-rings in between the suction spool and the priming chamber. So please be careful upon removal that you don't cut your O-rings so that when you reassemble it, you can reuse your O-rings again. With the priming chamber removed, you can now see the suction screen. The suction screen has several holes in it to keep the debris from getting into the priming chamber. This is something you want to make sure that everything's been removed and cleaned before you reinstall. Next, if you look down into the suction spool, you can see that there is three slots in the casting
so that large debris cannot get through the suction spool and up through the screen, up to the screen to plug the screen and into the priming chamber. In wrapping up our discussion with the priming chambers, one last thing I wanted to show you is our uh, other option of priming chamber, which we call the small priming chamber. So some of the features in this priming chamber are, <clears throat> are on the inside. So what we need to do to see that, we need to remove the six bolts that hold the lid to the, to the priming chamber housing. You lift off the lid. Be careful as you pull it out so you don't damage your float and your linkage for your posi valve. You can set that down. And you can see how, check the operation of the posi valve with the linkage. Looking into the small priming chamber, as you can see, uh, like the big one, we have a baffle inside. You can see the spot welds that hold the baffle inside the housing. And if you look further down inside the small priming chamber, you'll notice that there's the suction screen is inside the chamber, easy to get to, held by two bolts. Uh, you can remove those two bolts, pull the screen out, clean the debris if there happens to be plugged with any debris. As you can see with the large priming chamber and the small priming chamber, all components internally are the same except for an extension rod that we have on our float system and the small one does not have that extension and we need that extension due to the length of the size of the priming chamber.